Hello everybody and welcome. We're going to take a look at if, ifs, and using something called is blank for these. Now, if statements is honestly kind of an intermediate or advanced uh, function to use. You can use it in pretty um, basic ways, but the concepts and the ways you could use it, there's just, there's so much you could do with it. It's, it's a little bit hard. So hopefully this will give you at least an introduction to what you could do with it, as well as, you know, finding some different things here. So going back to our data set, let's say that we're asked to make department emails. So let's say that we're, we're asked to make a few different ways. So right now we just have the like at email. So maybe we want like, if it's an admin, that we want the email to be at the very end at admin.email.com. And if it's a student, to be at student.email.com. Oops, undo. We are at student.email.com. The at symbol here in Google actually, you can like do at mentions to people or files. So that's just what happened. And finally, everyone else, so just like staff, which would be the rest of the departments, at email.com or something like that. So Again, those are kind of the, the thoughts. Now we can use, you know, the departments like find the administrations and we use the count one. So we know that there's like four of them. So we could just go through and do those students. Um, you know, you could sort them and just say, OK, here are the students. Let's edit those like there are different ways. But let's use the if statements to find them. Now there are two if and ifs. So if is um kind of the older one um older ones ifs might actually not be in it if you're using like an earlier version of excel so you might have to use if and nested if functions so if basically has this logical expression and then after that a comma the next um argument is what do you want it to say if it's true what do you want it to say if it's false and that's it it's just the one thing ifs and let me just go to here. Does it, but depending on multiple, so you can do condition one, value one, condition two, value two. So if you kind of have this one that you know, it's like, it's just gonna be a true or a false, if might be the way to go. So in this case, we actually have three that we're trying to do, but we can say something like, here's the expression, if D, so column D is administration and that should be the exact same. I think I, I did the spelling correctly. Oh, sorry. So if this equals, because that's all in the one. So value if true, admin. Value if false, not admin. Enter, suggested all of fill, there we go. So now we can see here's the admin, 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 and all of these are not admin. So you can see already that that's pretty helpful. And you know, you could do this and then update the admin emails um, this way. But again, it's limited where it's there's a true and there's a false. The nested would be then you use another if statement to say that in the false one here, instead of saying not admin, saying, well, let's see if this is a student and things like that. It gets a little bit tricky with the if um, and nesting them. Just because uh, it, it can, if you do a whole bunch of them, it can just be confusing on which if is for what and why is it this one. So let's look at ifs for using multiple conditions. So how this goes is it's going to have condition one, value one, condition two, value two, condition three, value three, and so on. So let's say for condition one, let's do that same one, that D equals administration. And then if it's administration, do admin email. And this is just gonna be the placeholder. Um, just to make sure it works, and then we can we can use our um, function um, to make the email there. Condition two, let's look for if it's a student. So if, and you could just copy this, say if this equals student. 
And the next one is that we just want it if D equals anything else other than blank. We don't want it if it's a blank. So if you do greater than or less than, that just basically means that it is not equal to blank. Then we'll want this to be staff email. So enter, oops, what did I do? Okay, so D admin condition one admin. Condition two, oh, equals student, then student email, enter. So there we go. So staff email, staff email, admin, and then let's look, student emails. Great. So we can see that this works, and we see that these blank ones, well, I guess that's because it's not all the way there. So let's look. Oh. We get a no, no match, that's, oh, because all that we have is if it's admin, true, true. Well, in this case, it's false, it's not admin, false, it's not this, false, it's not that. So this means that there's, you know, there's it's not uh, under any of these, so thus we're getting an error. So the last one will be is blank. So this last condition is blank and you have to spell it correctly. Here it just says if the reference cell is blank or not. So we want this specifically in this cell here. And then if that's the case, you can again choose to say blank or just have it be blank. Enter, and now we see that this, this condition is true. So here, just to, to confirm blank. And there we go. So pulling it down, those would all be blanks. We want this to not say blank and just be empty. And then you can pull it up just to make sure, but that just shows, well, this is not blank. So let's bring this up. Now, one thing that is important, and this will be kind of the last thing before we finalize our emails, is order does matter. Now, order doesn't matter in all of these for every case, but in this, ifs will give you the value when the first thing is there. So example is this one. I put this at the very end because I just said, if it's not blank, then do staff email. So if I put this in the place of the first one and then put a comma, and then I have to remove this comma here and push enter, this one changes to staff email. Why? Because this D is true. It is not blank. So now if I pull this down, all of these are just gonna say staff email. So that one does make a difference. So I'm just going to undo, 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 undo. There we go. Now, some of them won't make a difference. For example, this one right here that's specifically to students, if I put this first, there's never going to be a time where a student email would also, or like the D would equal student and it would equal admin. So these ones could switch. The is blank could switch too. That could be at the front because all of these are not blank except for the bottom. So the one here that's like um, just encompassing all the other departments is the only one where the, the, the order would matter. Example two is if I put this in between this one right here, so admin would get emails, then all of the rest that are not blank would be staff. So we'd be missing out on the student emails. And I think that's where the ifs can be a little bit confusing. But again, just um, remember that the first true statement will be the one, the value that it is. Because this one is true here for, all, for just admin, and this one is true which is just saying it's not blank for all emails as well. So this, this one is true for admin and this one is true. So whichever one is first is going to be the one that is there. Now, another tip for these, and it's I probably should have done this earlier, is you can actually organize this by using either command or option and then enter. And what this does is it just puts like a page break. And for ifs, it's especially useful because you can say, okay, here's the first condition, first value. 
And then here's the second condition, second value. Here's the third condition, third value. And then here's kind of that last one that's kind of the is NA, like kind of the, you know, the last one, the fourth one. But um, again, that helps to be able to read it and say like, okay, here's the first, here's the second, here's the third, there we go. So now for the final thing, we wanna actually make the, the department emails. So we made these placeholders as the text because this helps just to make sure, yes, it's all working. So now we wanna use our email credential. So I'm just gonna push enter here quick and see, I think, no, we didn't. So we'll have to, you can pull, pull it there, but basically we're gonna use that concat and make the full name into that. Now in this, we'd also have to do uh, the substitute as well for these. So, you know, take that in mind too. Let's just start with the concat though. So I'm going to remove those, but this placeholder is going to be concatenate. And then we're going to do first name, comma, underscore, comma, last name, comma, and then the at admin dot email dot com. Let's see. Oh, and then we have to make sure we close this, otherwise this entire thing is going to be that. So we got the admin.email.com. The student email, we can basically do the same thing, except for we have the student email. Now, if you were watching the other one too, this is where nesting functions with if statements and stuff can get a little dicey. Um, we need that substitute in here too, if we wanted to do to do that. Um, the other option too is you could do these and then again, the find and replace. I know that some of these are going to be, um, you know, the incorrectly formatted, but for now, let's just keep it like this because it's going to get too complicated for what I want this video to be. So here now it's going to be the student email, student email.com. And then finally the staff email, and then I'll paste the concatenate and then just have it be at email.com, press enter. And there we go, we have those ones. Like I said, so admin, admin. So those are working. Bring it all the way down and a little pass just to make sure it's working. And then now all of these have the student. So now we have all of these ones in the format that we want, other than, and it kind of hurts me here, um, but these ones, for example, you'd have to do the substitute, which, you know, if you wanted to, you could go over to our substitute one and pick those up. But basically, okay, I'm going to do it. Substitute. And then text to search is this one. And then search for space, comma, place with nothing. And then you have to do another substitute and then do this one comma, the apostrophes, comma, nothing. There we go. And, you know, again, you'd put this here, here, and then just replace with student, place with nothing, enter, and then go down. And then now that'll substitute those. If you want to take it even another step for it further too, and again, this is where I'm saying it's advanced because I mean, these are big. You could also do lower and then have these in lowercase. Lower. Again, this is very much extra lower, but if you know that you're needing this and it's you know something that you're asked of on a weekly basis and you need to update it's very useful to be able to you know not have to do all of this at the same time and just go you can probably see too with all of this where it is helpful to use those uh kind of page breaks or you know the control enters to get that because essentially this is a lot of learning from the entire video lesson coming into one. And this is just one of the ways you can use if statements. So 
Hopefully this helps. Hopefully I didn't lose, lose you at the very end here because this is a complicated function. I would not say that this is a beginner one, but hopefully you can understand those different tasks as we've been looking through this whole lesson um, and this whole kind of um, lesson series. So again, the advice that I have is start with placeholders because trying to do all of this at once is a little bit intimidating. Start with the things that you need first, and then just kind of build outwardly there, um, especially with nested functions like this. So congrats, we've made uh, some pretty extensive and helpful uh, if statements. We've made a lot of different emails. We have successfully substitute lowered and made it in this exact format. And it's something where we can pull all the way down. And if we add more, like, you know, Andy... Anderson, who is a student, you can see here that it'll update. And it's interesting too, and maybe you would want it or not, since we pulled this one here, if I remove the department, it's actually going to disappear because this is the one that we did is blank. So, you know, again, it's there. And if we do admin, administration, then I'll have the administration email. If it's a new one like admin, it'll still get an email. It's just going to be a staff one instead. So there you have it. It's a dynamic, very helpful way to make a bunch of emails. And again, if you're just doing it once, there's easier ways than this. If you know that you're going to continually update and continually using this, it might be worth putting these lower substitute concatenate in if statements. Anyway, hopefully didn't lose you. If you have questions or anything, you can leave some in the comments. Hopefully you find this helpful. Again, yeah, this is where it starts to get a little bit co complex, but use your knowledge, rewatch the video, kind of get some different pieces from it. And again, you can, you can do some really wonderful things uh, with your data if you know all these different um, functions. So thanks for watching. This is good formula that we created. <laughs> See you in the next one.